second question is this. It comes right out of the passage. In verse 18, it says, Many who became believers confessed their sinful practices. Now, they're from Ephesus, okay? Ephesus is, in many ways, uh, the, the Las Vegas of their time period. Much sin, most related to money. People did all kinds of crazy things in order to make money. Literally, the pagan religions of the area bought their statues at plants that built them in Ephesus. Many of the Christians in Ephesus made their living forging and forming gods to be sent out. At the heart of who they were, they felt open. And the Spirit of God showed them their sin. And get what they did. They were honest about it. They confessed. And so I asked the question, for us, how many of us have told someone about a sin in our life in the last week, two weeks, a month? How many of us genuinely love God to the point that we want sin gone? And so we are willing to confess it, not just to God. Listen, I heard this my whole life. I confessed it to God. Okay, we, at the end of our day, we put our head on the pillow. We say, Jesus, forgive me our sins. We, we, you know, I, I wish I hadn't done what I did, that kind of thing. But the Scripture guides us not just to confess our sins to God, which is agreeing with Him that when He said it was sin, that makes it sin. So I agree with you, Lord. What I just did was sin. I confess it to you. But beyond that, He teaches us to live life with other Christ followers with whom we can confess. One thing I know to be true about the Bible Belt is that we do not live in a confession safe area. Do we? When Christians confess their sins, we all go, <gasps> well, I never. The Spirit of God's going, yes, you did last week. You might think nobody knows, but I know. All of a sudden, for whatever reason, we let this overarching idea that Christians are supposed to be perfect and upstanding citizens, and we're not supposed to ever mess up or screw up or do something wrong, make it to where we don't ever develop spiritual relationships with people where we can confess what's wrong with us, ever. And here's the truth. The Scripture's clear. When my sin or your sin is hidden in here, I can confess it to God all day long. Scripture tells us that we'll be forgiven. But do you know that the Scripture teaches us that forgiveness comes from God, but healing comes from confessing to other believers. When we open our voice and share our frailties, our frailties become less in our lives. The more honest you can be about your sin, the less sin will ultimately be in your life. The Scripture goes on. He says, many of them who became believers confessed their sinful practices. And then he says this, a number of them who had been practicing sorcery brought their incantation books and burned them at a public bonfire. Third point, we need a book burning. No. No. Not a big fan of the book burnings. This particular one, though, this particular one, you see what they do? In a city spiritually driven by pagan religion, when they meet Jesus, they lay down the person they have been, they lay down the person Jesus wants them to be, and when they realize that those two things are not the same, they get rid of the person they used to be. And it's gone. They literally burn their idols. This is why this passage haunts me so much. I can't get over. You guys, please take this. Take it on the chin with me here, okay? Can't get over how comfortable we are with our own sin. People come to me all the time, Brad, I did it again, I sinned again. Okay, I'll pray for you. 
The next week, yeah, I did it again. Okay, I'll pray for you. Yeah, I did it again. Okay. This week, I had a young man ask me this question in a Bible study I was leading. He said he had a particular sin in his life he really likes. Okay? It's a real honest, confession-oriented kind of group, and he just blurted it out. He said, I do this every week. I'm going to keep doing it every week. If I do it every week for the rest of my life, his question was, will I go to hell? I was, I was leading with another man who gave a very good answer at the beginning of this conversation, and his answer was, well, no. That one sin won't send you to hell. Jesus forgives our sin, and that's true. He was right on. But then he and I both saw something in the eyes of that young man that I've seen in the mirror in the past. And it was like he went, all right. And I said, but time out. I agree with my brother who just said that. I do. But that's not everything there is to be said. I said, I said if you today are saying there's a sin in my life, and if God says, stop it, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to keep doing this. I like it. I want it. I need it. And I choose it. And I said, that sin's not sending you to hell. But you are. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, being a Christ follower is not about asking him to forgive you and that's it. I'm going to keep sinning, Lord. I sure hope you'll forgive me. That's good. That's bunk. It's not the gospel at all. The gospel is my life is broken and destroyed and messed up. But God, if you want it, you can have it. It is yours. The scripture tells us that when we do that, he literally remakes our heart. And whatever sin that was habitual in my life, and I used to want to do it, and I used to want to find ways to get to do it and still go to heaven, my desire for that sin begins to go away. Now you might be thinking, does that mean that when someone is saved, they never sin again? No. As evidenced by the last week of my life. But here's the difference. When you give your life to Christ and you begin the journey to heaven with Him, the Spirit of God's grace and mercy cleanses everything about you that is dirty and repairs everything about you that is broken. But you still live in this body. And this body still has its own urges and its own addictions and its own struggles and it's learned how to do things. You know? And, and it wants to keep doing the things that it's always done. But you then now, your heart, your soul, your spirit is not what it once was. And so there begins in you a war. The Apostle Paul says he beats his body into obedience to Christ. That means just like we might work out on the weights to make our arms and legs what we want them to be, we work out spiritually to help our choices and our behaviors become what God wants them to be. And when I sin, which I do fairly often, the Spirit of God says to me, Brad, you can do better than that. What are you thinking, Brad? Do you see the pain you just caused that person? Do you realize the problems you just created? Do you realize how I was not honored in your behavior right there, Brad? And I, or any other Christ follower, would then follow that up with, Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. I agree with you. You're right. I confess that. I will, I will not do that again, or at least I will give it my best shot. And then all of a sudden, what happens in the life of a Christ follower is that you begin to realize, whoa, 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 there's that one big sin. I like it a lot. But God doesn't like it a lot. And I belong to Him. I don't belong to me anymore. And so come heaven or high water, so to speak, I'm going to overcome that. I don't want to do it anymore. And sometimes I do want to do it anymore, but I really don't want to do it anymore. But I'm, I'm going to ask the Spirit of God to guide me, and I'm going to devote myself, listen, to be faithful to the one who now owns me. 